Today we're visiting with Dr. Terry Bidwell, Extension Specialist with the Department of Natural Resource Ecology and Management. We're going to learn about FireWise landscaping. Well, Terry, fire uh, safety is certainly a very important concern for us here in Oklahoma. Tell me a bit about the FireWise program. The FireWise program started in California quite a few years ago and it's spread as kind of a national program now throughout the United States. Here in Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Division of Forestry actually takes the lead on FireWise, mm -hmm. but a lot of agencies work with it. And what are some of the components to it? What are we trying to teach homeowners? FireWise is a simple idea. It's really common sense on how to landscape around your home. Uh, the materials you use to build your home in such a way that if a fire approached your house it wouldn't catch on fire. Even if the fire department wasn't there you weren't at home, the fire would simply move by your house. Okay, and today we're visiting a site in the Stillwater area that they've adopted a very nice firewise landscape. And we want to think about it kind of in zones, right, as you move away from your house? Exactly. That mm -hmm. first zone is something we might call defensible space. And that's okay. really an important area, uh, not only for the homeowner to be safe, or fire departments to come in. Fire departments are not going to put a crew in on a house that they have no way to stop the fire from hitting it. So they're not going to come in. So this makes a space that's safe for people to operate in in the case of a fire. And for that we want to have a nice open area where equipment can come in. Nice open area, very little fuel so even if a fire is in here it's not going to burn and people can operate in here without getting killed. Okay, and what are some of the components right around the house that we want to think about in our landscape, the types of plants and landscaping? Mm -hmm. The first thing to avoid is something that's called a ladder fuel. Mm -hmm. So if people think about an eastern red cedar, for example, that's a, a, a plant that's an evergreen. It has a lot of oils in the leaves. The leaves and branches go all the way to the ground. So if a surface fire burning in the grass comes up and hits that cedar, it can move right up through the cedar, either into another tree or into the roof line of your house. So we're thinking about plants that have foliage all the way from the ground that are going to carry that fire up to the crown exactly. of our trees. And you mentioned red cedar, but pretty much any plant that has a lot of oils or right. resins. Most all evergreens would fall into that category. So people that would want to maintain a red cedar around their home, the key would be to limb that thing up so that you can walk under it and there's no limbs close to the ground. Okay, and I see as we look out at the trees in the landscape, they're limbed up as well. They're all limbed up, right. Okay, and that's another way to create that break from the that's ground. Right. What about some of our hard surfaces, you know, as we look at, um, say, a patio or a deck? Right. Uh, the decking material, you have to be really careful. Some of the decks aren't covered underneath or, or on the side, so leaves can blow in there. Mm -hmm. uh, some decks that are not of high quality deteriorate pretty rapidly and end up with cracks, so those can catch embers and can catch on fire. Mm -hmm. Generally, you can put those out after the fire passes your house, but it's one of those things you really don't want. Uh, there's some other decking material that's made out of composite that's pretty much fire resistant. Okay. And then, but even if you have a fire resistant material, you want to make sure that there's not debris right. that's flammable underneath that. Deck. And on this house, they've actually used some lattice work to mm -hmm. keep leaves and things from blowing up under the deck, which is a nice way to do that. Okay. And I guess the last thing right up around the house you want to really consider is irrigation. Irrigation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think these people have probably used a variety of fescue or something that stays green pretty much year round and they mm -hmm. keep that well watered so that will not carry a fire. Okay, well let's look at some of the areas a little bit farther out from the house and how we manage those. Okay. Well Terry, as we move away from the house, the thing I notice most is that it's a bit more open in here. It is. Mm -hmm. What are some of the landscaping principles we want to consider as we get farther from the house? Okay, one of the things, the tree limbs are trimmed up so you can walk under those, so that gives you a fuel break. There's no ladder fuels. Mm -hmm. And also, we've got space between these bigger trees, so if a fire did get into one tree, it wouldn't carry it to another one. So kind of an opening the canopy. Opening the canopy. You can imagine if there was a fire up in this tree, it's not yeah. going to be able to jump over exactly. to the it next Exactly, it won't move one. over. Right. Another thing as we walk through here, I notice is our firewood stored out here not right up by the house. And that's a key principle of firewise because again an ember can get into that firewood and start on fire. You could put it out but it's better not to have it up there. Well Terry it seems to me kind of the big picture is really reducing the amount of flammable material that we have in the landscape. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah that's the key element. So ma maintenance and uh, pruning, pruning out the dead wood and I imagine as all these leaves fall we're going to want to clean those up as yeah, well. Yeah, try to rake those up as much as you can because if you don't you realize the wind comes through and it'll push them back against your fence or your house. Right. Mm -hmm. Now behind us is the unmaintained area and right. there's a good break again in the canopy between the two. 
But we can see that has a much denser understory and a lot more flammable material in it. Unfortunately, people view an area like this and think this is good wildlife habitat, this is what you like. It does screen your vision, but it's a very unhealthy forest. Mm -hmm. One of the measures of a healthy forest is diversity of plants and animals. Right. When a fire, uh, an area like this has been excluded for fire for probably 50 or 60 years, you've got red cedar coming in, which is a poster child for poor land management, and all these other plants, and so you've got a closed canopy. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is come in here and thin this out, and get more light on the ground, you're going to have a much more healthier forest, much higher plant diversity, and a lot better wildlife habitat. We're going to see a lot of uh, flowers, understory plants Absolutely. come Beautiful up. Absolutely. Beautiful flowers that would occur out there that we don't see right now. And I think you made a very important point. We've been talking about fire safety and fire suppression, but fire is a very natural part of uh, the Absolutely. landscape. And, and some people might say, well, I don't like fire. Well, that's, mm -hmm. that's an opinion. That's fine. But our historical evidence, all our research points to, in order to have a healthy prairie, forest, whatever, it has to be burned. Or it's not going to be healthy. Okay. Now we've been looking mainly at just the area around the house, but on a community level, there's also some things that maybe a homeowner association can do to protect an area, and that would be creating fire breaks, right? That's correct. And there's a large fire break close to this residence. It's 100 feet wide and three quarters of a mile long to try to make a break between an area that's just completely covered with red cedar in this housing addition. Okay, and that's another important thing to get your community involved with. Absolutely. And try to get everybody safe. Yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing these tips. Um, there's a website where people can learn more. The yes, firewise.org, and it's a really excellent website. There's also a lot of materials on there that you can order for free if you have a community effort to educate people about wildfire. All right, thank you so much, Terry. Good to be here, thanks.